My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcasting, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. We're not afraid. Here we go guys, another Sunday, another show. This is Luca Zanna broadcasting on K-Talks 1340 AM and on United States to the FM Network. And you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. Uh, we had a great guest the last uh, few weeks and I always like to pretty much work hard to find people who can articulate with me all differences of opinions or reinforce my opinions. Simple as that. And as I said many times, this show is not about, you know, uh, going some sort of uh, theatrical debates and be some, be some sort of, a, you know, provocative. No. I like really, or generally, try to learn from you guys. I like to learn from my guests. And more important, I like to try to find a way that we can unite as Americans. You know, and that's pretty much the story. You know, of course, I got my convictions. I mean, I got my opinions. And, uh, and you know, and this is me. But at the same time, I'm open to be challenged, and I want to be challenged, you know. And I, for me, I tell you, I had incredible opportunities the last uh, few weeks, for example, to meet people, you know, few, a couple of years at this point, not a few weeks, that they found me through the show. And I really became, um, I don't know, I don't want to say, I don't know him very well as a person, but I'm getting closer, you know. I start to almost feel like we are friends, even if we don't spend time together. Because I tell you, I see the humanity, I see the how they, they think, I also see how they change, how they completely open themselves also to interact with my ideas and probably, you know, get new ideas, you know. Uh, for me, I told you, like I had last week, that lady, Linda Gilstrap from California, uh, a mother, a single mom, who pretty much was completely against guns, uh, at least she was for gun control, just one year ago. She came on my show and she said, you know, look, I really don't like guns and, you know, I'm for gun control. And I tried, you know, nicely because, you know, I'm not trying here to be rude. I'm not trying here even to impose myself. All I said, you know, you don't like guns, that's fine. But let me give you some logic and some facts about we need guns and blah, blah, blah. One year later, she wrote me and she was on the show last Sunday and completely, you know, 180 degrees change. And now she's uh, for gun rights. She understands. And, you know, she also buying her guns. So this is my point, you know, I'm here to try to reach out and if you can improve me, I really appreciate it. There are things you can teach to me. I love that. One person really I appreciate so much, you know, it's one of being one of the first, uh, one of the first uh, listeners on my show, you know, is uh, this gentleman from uh, High Desert, San Bernardino County, California, that, you know, normally at the beginning we did not really probably understand each other because you know he considered himself a democrat you know and i don't know sometimes much you know just uh, i'm there and i think you know every democrat must be a pain in the butt instead prove the point you know never judge just because from this labeling that uh, we have you know there have been democrats in the past they've been great patriots and they really try to save america like you know i will tell you later about this uh, congressman um, you know that was you know killed uh, died mysteriously on this airplane but we'll talk later but anyway the point is i'm very honored to have i consider this my friend also one of my best listeners you know the gentleman i'm going to bring you now on the air and we will talk about first of all some updates you know about uh, some very important lawsuits and also about uh, a lot of other great information stay with me with me one second we're not afraid you work for us we're not your slaves. Don't tread on us. You crossed the line. So you will pay for all your crimes. After a long train of abuse. Here we go. And this is was Don't Tread on Us. You know, I had to do some sort of a special request for Ronald O'Donnell, my best friend here on the air. And uh, here we are. Ronald, are you there? Hey, 
how you doing, Zena? I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, last time we talked, you were pretty much living dangerously, and uh, you know, you're in the middle of uh, this uh, federal lawsuit against uh, this huge monster bank, and you know, you're pursuing the cause of uh, try to pretty much expose the fraud of these uh, illegal foreclosures. And there are a lot of news you want to give us, some updates. So I'll give you the floor. Let us know whatever's going on with you. Well, I'll tell you what, everything's wonderful here. I just want to make a comment that I want to, you know, say to the new owners of KTOX, they have this radio station that is permitting people to talk to each other and permitting people to get together and to discuss issues um, that are important to us around our community here in the desert. And uh, my hat is off to them. Um, I appreciate them, and I know the listeners appreciate them for allowing us our right of freedom of speech. So I want to open with that. Thank you, K-Talks. Great. And thank you for permitting uh, Lucas Anna to uh, be a true American, to be a true patriot, to um, really care about the citizens and the community that they serve. So with that, I would like to get into, if, with your permission, of Santa. Course. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, the issue. Now, you know, I've always been about uh, bank fraud in uh, the banking industry um, across America that is impacting and harming American citizens. Now, it sounds controversial, and of course, you know, there are the detractors that will say, well, you shouldn't discuss this. Zana should not discuss this. Um, no one should discuss this because well, you can't say anything bad about the banks because you're an American. You're, well, they have all their excuses. In fact, there was a law 40, 45 years ago that you could go to jail um, for saying a negative thing about a bank. Wow. And believe it or not, that's never been repealed. Oh, my gosh. Great. <laughs> well, if you would say something about a bank, you could go to jail. Okay, let me break the law. Oh, one no. second, one second. Ronald, Ronald, I need to be sure I want to break this law. So let's pick a couple of banks. Let's go with the, the pretty much the heart of the beast, the main cancer, the private Federal Reserve. So I want to say something I hope can be on record for humanity, posterity, and I hope I can break this law pretty well. The Federal Reserve Bank is the biggest cancer of America. It's the cause of the destruction of our dollar and pretty much they own our government and is a pretty much a control regularized and legalized mafia. This is Luca Zanna talking today, August the 9th, and they can all gone to hell. You think it was bad enough? Well, I think you haven't been emphatic enough here. Okay, so continue. You know, go Luca, ahead. If you want to break the law, I want to go floor. one step further. Please go ahead. Okay? Yes. And this is, I, I hope the listeners can. You know, uh, I'm trying to make it simple. I'm not trying to be confusing. I'm trying to get to the point. But, you know, you just saw that the Federal Justice Department um, convicted federally mm -hmm. um, one of the participants in the LIBOR scandal. They called it the LIBOR scandal. Okay. And that LIBOR scandal, and it's a, um, you know, an admission, the guy, you know, didn't have the courage to go to a jury trial, so he just pled guilty um, for fixing the interest rates. And that's what I've been working on. You know that, and I mm -hmm. know. I mean, I, I, the other shows I've said, yes, they're fixing the interest rates. It's phantom interest. It's a lie. Well, the LIBOR... People don't know what that means, a LIBOR scandal. They're watching the news. What the hell is a LIBOR scandal? Yeah, tell us, tell us more, please. Okay. I need to open with this. 
LIBOR means the London Interbank Offered Rate. Okay. L I B O R. The London Inter, that's the I, Bank, that's the B, mm -hmm. Offered O Rate, R. Now, why is this important? And for you people out there that took out loans, and they called them adjustable rate mortgages, which is 99% of you guys. Okay. What you didn't know is your adjustable rate could go up according to the LIBOR rate. But it also says in your contract that you don't know because you never read it. And I didn't either when I signed it. Mm -hmm. Your rate could go down every six months. They, they readjust the mortgages every six months based on the LIBOR rate. Mm -hmm. Based on the London Interbank Offered Rate. L-I-B-O-R. It's in your contract. Yes. In your own loan. Well, what has gone on for 10 years is now that the Treasury Department is offering money at, you know, to the banks at 0.25% interest, that your mortgage should have automatically gone down in the last 10 years, every six months, one half of 1% per period, which would have been every six months, which meant... 1% per year, it should have gone down in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. according to the contract you signed under the LIBOR rate, which is in your contract, which means after 10 years, if your interest was 5% or 6% or 7%, had it gone down 1% per year, for the last five or six or seven years, that would mean there would be no interest on your loan. Wow. According to the contract that you signed. Hmm. Because it was tied to the LIBOR rate. You read your contract. It's in there, guys. Look at your mortgage. It'll say, I have an adjustable rate mortgage. My adjustable rate mortgage may be increased or decreased every six months depending on the LIBOR rate. And no one knows this except for Luca Zana, except for K Talks, that's actually allowing you to go ahead and publicize this. Wow, I'm learning new thing. I'm telling you, I, as much as I'm trying to learn about this banking scam, this is something new that I. You know, well, they were convicted. Just, yeah, wow. Convicted by the Justice Department for rigging the LIBOR rate. Wow. One guy came forward, mm -hmm. and what he did was he, um, you know, didn't want to do federal time, and so he decided to go ahead and, um, you know, admit mm. that they have been manipulating the LIBOR rate since 2007, the financial crisis. Yes. In order to keep people from getting a reduction in their monthly mortgage payment as the LIBOR rate. Okay. Would have afforded them. Okay, okay, great. I mean, this is something new. I mean, guys, our listeners, you know, sometimes things may seem like, you know, you probably drive, you know, maybe your home, you know, cooking, whatever. I say, what is he talking about? He's talking about your home. And even if sometimes these talks sound a little bit technical and boring, I know it's not exciting, maybe then uh, talking about, you know, football or other things, things about they are stealing your money. They are foreclosing your home against also the laws and the contracts that they're supposed to, you know, fulfill. I mean, this is a serious matter. And I tell you, I like to talk a lot about these things because this is exactly who control our government. It's a private reserve federal system. It's controlled by this banking system. And the heart, as I said before, is the, the monstrosity called Federal Reserve. It is as, as federal as the Federal Express. And all these major banks out there, pretty much they are part of the scam. And that ignorance 
is exactly our worst enemy. That's why we get to here learn. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And sometimes, even if I don't understand everything now, at least write it down and start to do your research. That's all I'm asking for. And verify the information we're talking. Now, um, Ron, I would like to ask you, first of all, how ended up, I mean, all this chase lawsuit that you were doing on federal court a uh, few, few months ago, what upgrade update did you have with that? Well, can I, you know, I know you are, are, are short on time, and I know that this show only lasts a few moments. Can I just finish up yes, on the live board, course. and I'll get into my lawsuit? Please, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Okay, because I want you to know, I want your listeners to know, this is so damn important. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the LIBOR gets its name from the London Interchange Offered Rate from the City of London. The City of London is in England. Exactly. It's a one square mile city. The only other city, there's two other cities that are one square mile, mm -hmm. okay? The other one square mile city is the District of Columbia. Yes. Now, that's a district. If there's a district, that means a district is a member of a higher authority. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me yet? The District of Columbia. And I, I know it's um, like a mental thing for people to understand what I'm about to say. But a district has the central committee, if you will. Mm -hmm. And a district is only a subsidiary of such or the same. Yes. So... The city of London, that one square mile piece of property in England, yes, controls Washington, D.C. Washington is a district of Columbia that belongs to the LIBOR. Wow. Now, it's really worrisome when you realize that the only other district that's been identified so far mm -hmm. in the world <clears throat> is the one square mile district, not district, but headquarters, top. Yeah. If I can, it has I, districts, and it's called the Vatican. Yes. Let me give you uh, some extra, uh, extra input here. I mean, there is uh, some facts that you cannot verify, my dear listeners, you know, we had uh, in 1788, you know, the constitution for these United States of America, okay, that was the original organic constitution of the people then in 1871 we had an amended version it's called the constitution of the United States, and more important in 1871, and this is a fact, you know, we can talk and debate whatever you want, but this is pretty much the fact Exactly, the February the 21st, 1871, the 41st Congress in, is in a session, and pretty much uh, uh, in Section 34, Section 3, Chapter 61 and 62, in this date in history of our nation, Congress passed an act title, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, and this is also called the Act of 1871. What does this mean, really? Man, it means that Congress had no, no constitutional authority to do so, he created a separate part of government for the District of Columbia. That pretty much is a 10 mile square parcel of land. Now, there is much more information. I mean, just an hour wouldn't be enough to cover everything. But there are U.S. Supreme Court cases, and there are data that pretty much shows that in this date. And I heard about that many times. You know, the 1871, the February the 21st, is very important date that we should learn about American history. And the week pretty much being hijacked from our original constitution to a corporation. America became a corporation. And that's spell it out. If you go on Google, don't trust me, just do or whatever search engine you like, start to look, and there are a lot of studying, a lot of researches that brings you fact 
exactly the proof that we are now under a corporation. And the point is, the corporation has shareholders. Who owns this corporation? And I really believe what you are saying now about uh, England and the Bank of England, that makes a lot of sense, more than ever. Go ahead. What do you think about this? Are you familiar about this Act of 1871? Well, actually, I learned that <coughs> in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Um, and although I went to college um, and I received an associate degree in accounting and I received a bachelor's degree in economics and I received a doctorate degree in law, not one word was ever mentioned about that. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that from people like you and from other patriots. And I looked it up. <clears throat> I looked it up myself. And you're right. You're 100% right. And what I'm saying here with this LIBOR scandal, and anybody can Google it, anybody can look it up, LIBOR scandal, okay. L-I-B-O-R scandal, Google it. It's a direct connection from the Vatican to the Bank of London to Washington, D.C. Wow. That's who controls us. And I was born and raised a Catholic. Yeah. I didn't know that. Me too. I was born a Catholic too, and you know, I realized and I learned the scam, you know, that unfortunately he's just another king that uh, uses religion to pretty much control people, you know, and doesn't mean that uh, uh, my faith in Christ is less. No, I think it's even more. I just don't want the middleman try to pretty much use, uh, uh, you know, religion to try to subdue us and to do things according to his uh, plan because we know very well now uh, the news for example and this is not the first pope but this pope for sure is advocating for global government global currency global religion is part of this cabala of devils that's my real opinion about that now uh, we have like about five seven minutes and i want to you use these minutes for whatever you want if you want to give us updates about your lawsuit or if you want to talk about hillary clinton from your democratic uh, point of view perspective whatever you want go ahead well, thank you for that. And, um, well, I still can't get over the revelation that I, you know, saw when I read the LIBOR scandal because, you know, people read it in the newspaper in the Wall Street Journal and they read it and they don't see how it affects them. Mm -hmm. They don't see what, what, the, what is this LIBOR scandal? Because, of course, the newspapers um, kind of color quote it. But I'm going to say something. Um, there's an attorney, the one that I appointed um, on the California Central Democratic Party Central Committee, mm -hmm. Lenore Albert in Huntington Beach, yeah. that right now has a federal lawsuit regarding this LIBOR scandal. And she had no idea. Wow. She's learning as this is going on. Who this is, and this is going all the way to the Treasury of the United States. These people from London, and then their people from the Vatican, mm -hmm. are sitting in the Treasury of the United States holding our checkbook. Yes. yes. What is that checkbook? That is the IRS taxes that every working man and woman and child pays to make an income. They fill out their income tax return. They put that money into the IRS. The money goes into the United States Treasury. And there's this fund that it amounts to about $2 trillion a year. Mm. Wow. And what we are watching here, what is going on, it's been going on for about 50 years, maybe longer, yeah. is that these people are sitting in a position of writing the checks out from the citizens of the United States of America's checkbook. No one's ever described it like I'm doing it here on your show. But it's a real simple principle. There's a $2 trillion income coming in every year from all of us taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Who writes the check? Not the President of the United States. <laughs> Not Congress. 
not the Supreme Court of the United States, all three branches of government, the Federal Reserve Board exactly. is in charge of our money. Yeah. And they're a private corporation, and they do not divulge who owns them, and I found out it's the Vatican. Yeah. There are more than one. There are more than one. You know, there is also different <laughs> families. It's the Vatican. Backers. It's the Queen of England. The Rothschild, they say also Rockefeller family, the JP Morgan. But that's who Rothschilds work for. Mm -hmm. Get it to your head. They're just a financial arm. Yeah. But the point is... You know, they're just the, the fall guy, too. They have the money, of course. But who do they work for? Ronald, but think about the idea, you know, when the, if the American people would stop for a moment, do whatever they're doing, and if they could understand one thing, one thing only, that in 1913, before 1913, we did not have this uh, monstrosity. I mean, the American government, the U.S. government, was still in control of their currency, okay? And now, in 1913, because President Wilson and the corrupted Congress, whatever was left that night of Christmas, there were few of them, everybody was out for Christmas night, for vacation, they pretty much gave this uh, sovereign power, this constitutional power, to print money out of thin air to a private entity not even backing anymore by gold or silver but the scary thing is that you now every time the u.s government must ask for a dollar that could be for a welfare or could be for anything uh, the point is you're gonna pay we're gonna pay interest on the dollar is a dollar of debt a dollar of destruction just because this bank has the magic power and now you know ron they don't even anymore to print anything it's all digital it's the biggest scam the biggest scam of the world and that point that's how they control every government of the world they can make completely unlimited money because they don't even need to work for money like we do and i don't know if you're familiar on there was uh, this uh, congress investigation uh, during uh, the reagan years i wasn't a fan of reagan they have a lot of things i i think he did wrong in my opinion but one thing he was trying to do right he was trying to figure it out really where do they go all the income tax of uh, the individuals what do they really pay for and this uh, Congress, congressional investigation find out that pretty much almost every dollar of uh, our income tax, all it does goes to pay the interest on the debt to this private Federal Reserve. And that pretty much shows that when you pay your taxes, as they say, your fair share, is just a brainwashing phrase because you really don't pay to any service. What you do, you just pay to a private monstrosity of bankers who hijack our government. Uh, what do you think? Am I wrong on this one or are we okay with that? Well, you're, you're fine, except that there's a flaw in your argument, which I, you know, Tell me. Uh, want to point out. Please, go ahead. Okay, you said it's a constitutional... Um, amendment, and it, you know, was never a constitutional amendment um, that authorized the Federal Reserve Board. Oh, I agree with that. That, that was, by the way, the 16th Amendment was well, we, never well, ratified. Well, well, here's, you know, because we, we all are trying to learn, mm -hmm. and I looked in the Constitution, yeah, and I looked for the authorization in the United States Constitution yes. for the authorization of the Federal Reserve Board, mm -hmm. which I'm calling the Pope now. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I don't see it. Mm -hmm. There's no amendment. I mean, you know, I'm familiar with the amendments, and I challenge anyone, yeah. anyone listening, to look at the United States Constitution and look at all the amendments. And you will not see one that authorizes the Federal Reserve Board to be doing business. Well, Period. I, at the end. I agree with you. And I, I, I meant unconstitutional, just to let you know. And there is more for many research and many st people as proofs uh, that you can pretty much see yourself. 16th Amendment was never ratified. And I don't have time right now to go through this, but maybe I'll go another show. But all I said... Do your researches. There is much more than we've been told. Ron, I have like 60 seconds. Unfortunately, time goes so fast. Maybe I need to get you another time. Whatever you want to say, 60 seconds. Go ahead. Well, what I want to say is thank God for shows like K Talks is permitting to be on the air. And thank God 
for love, guns, and freedom, and Lucasana, because only through our exercise of the First Amendment across this great country will we remain free as human beings. And with that, I'm going to ask you, Luca Zana, to please play Don't Tread on Us hey, for go. our Americans that are listening. Perfect. I'll do that right now, Ron. Right now, guys, don't go away because uh, after this song, I will have another guest and we will talk about uh, this death of uh, mysterious death of several doctors, activist doctors that were trying to warn that were trying to warn uh, Americans about the danger of vaccines. And out of the blue, they're dying like flies. So don't go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zana. Thank you, Ron. Talk to you soon. Here we go. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman, I'm not afraid. and a constitutional activist, I'm not afraid. Italian by birth, I'm not afraid. American by choice, Gianluca Zana, I'm not afraid. and his new CD, Love, Guns and Freedom, 16 powerful songs on one CD, from the heart of a patriot.